All right, first invitational. What could go wrong? Hey there, folks. Chuck here. And, oh, look, I made another episode. Whew, how's your 2020 going? Mine's been a little intense. It's been a rough start, and... A lot has gone wrong, but I got some very good news today. So that was a really nice step in the right direction. So give me a good boost of energy to get this build in and hopefully I can meet the deadline for this, my first participation in a three blind mice invitational. I'm hoping as the year goes on, we can continue to turn things around and this video series is part of that. So thanks for joining me on the journey. So what is a three blind mice invitational you're asking? Well, the three blind mice are three custom diecast builders, George of Hodges Hot Wheels and Diecast, Lee of Time Riders Wee Little Cars, and Paul of Fat Guy Productions. And they have this build once a month where they take three of the same casting and do their own special take on it and invite other creators to participate. I was excited when I got into this hobby to find out that these sort of things exist and wanted one of my first builds to be a participation in one of their events. That being said, time to dive in on some trivia and some fun facts about the Ford Anglia and this particular casting. Being from this side of the pond, I don't really know much about the British Fords. I did know that there was a Ford Anglia featured prominently in the Harry Potter series, but this one is quite different from that. This is an older model of the Ford Anglia, which was a sedan and a panel truck. During its run from 1939 to 1967, almost 1 1.6 million Anglias were produced, both in the sedan or saloon versions and the panel truck versions. This particular version of the Anglia is the 1949 to 1953 version, known as the E494A. It featured a whopping 10 horsepower, a top speed of almost 57 miles an hour, and a 0 to 50 time in a blistering 38.3 seconds. On the plus side, you got a fuel consumption of 36.2 miles per imperial gallon, so at least it was still better than walking. This particular casting is a Hot Wheels casting. It came out in the year 2000 and is still being produced today. It was designed by Phil Reelman. Reilman. I should look that up. I'm gonna say Ryleman. He has been designing Hot Wheels cars since 1993. He has worked on such iconic castings as the Twin Mill 2, the Silhouette 2, and the 1998 Dodge Grand Caravan. He is currently a senior manager of Mattel, so good for him. Nice to see a designer doing well in the world. This particular version of the casting is the 2005 Asphalt Jungle Mainline series, featuring a black plastic base and a black interior. I was excited to participate in this three blind mice build because I do have a soft spot for panel trucks. And while I'm not really a drag racer guy, I did like the opportunity of taking this drag racing Anglia and returning it to its roots, envisioning what it would have been like as a well-worn shop truck that has been retired to the back lot and is currently collecting dust and maybe has sat in some mud for a while and is awaiting its turn as a restoration or as a conversion into a drag vehicle. I wanted it to look like a British panel truck and I'm much more familiar with vintage US panel trucks so I had to do a lot of digging around online to see what vintage British panel trucks looked like compared to US ones and I found this one here and another one over here that gave a lot of inspiration to this build. And I really liked the uh, front black fender look. I love the door mounted spare tires on these panel trucks. So I wanted to make sure that I incorporated that as part of the build. So with that in mind, let's boogie. So as with all builds, this started with post drilling and everything went perfectly fine. Once the drilling was done and all the pieces were found, then I had to get rid of the parachute on the back and removing it went perfectly fine. This go around, I switched to aircraft stripper courtesy of my local parts store and it did a much better job of getting the paint off in a much quicker fashion. It's not as camera fun as I would have liked it to be, but it saves a lot of time and does a really good job of getting almost all the paint off. Yes, almost 
all the paint off. So some time with my pick and some wire wheeling, and it was ready to drop acid once again into the giant vat of phosphoric acid to give it an electro polish and get it ready for the buffing wheel. Once again, taking a group bath with the rest of this season's castings in the Sonic Cleaner with some mean green and some hot water. Then it came time to form the panel lines on the back doors and everything went perfectly fine. Oh, actually things did go perfectly fine. I really wanted to cut the hood and grill in such a way that I could have one of the original stock style side opening hood panels open, but I decided not to tempt fate since I was already behind the eight ball on this project. And to save time, I sealed the hood shut using some putty to to fill in the large gaps around the forward tilt hood and avoid revealing the massive amount of horsepower under the hood. Later, I decided to just cut the engine out completely and save it as a spare. Maybe I can use it on a post-apocalyptic build or something later on. We'll see if it shows up again. And it was dribble time once again. I tried a grinding wheel initially this go around to add some rust wear but I almost immediately switched back to the burr tool. I think that's going to be my weapon of choice when it comes to using the Dremel to create dents. It does a great job of getting into nooks and crannies and creating fairly realistic small dents and rust pittings. And now for my favorite tool name, the round handle needle files. Say it with me. Round handled needle files. Round handled needle files. Round handled needle files. We have fun on this channel shot of the Tamiya primer and it was off to airbrushing. I'm still pretty new with an airbrush so I wanted to try doing a little color modulation with the blues. I've finally got around to getting some proper airbrush paints, a Vallejo starter kit. I wanted to do a bright sky blue not unlike the Plymouth Valiant that this channel is named after. So I dug into the paints and started mixing colors and wanted to add some color modulation to it. And it came out okay. I'm still working on mixing and providing proper variants when it comes to highlights and lowlights. So I thought I would do a little more modulation with my colors using powdered pigments instead of the airbrush this go around, but it was nice to practice. This build I wanted to be a little more oily and grimy than the Copperhead Roads build being dusty and dirty. I went with an oily black for the chassis. The interior on this casting is almost impossible to see, so I didn't sweat the custom bucket seats too much. I gave it a coat of golden brown paint from my craft paint stash. I don't know why I'm painting this area over here. There's no way you're going to see any of it. But once you start applying paint, it's hard to stop. My love-hate relationship with the Molotov pen continues as it continues to leak, and I continue to make the best of things. This go-around, I was a little happier with my trim application. This go-around, I was a little happier with my trim application. I don't know if it's because my hands are getting steadier or this was just a much more pronounced trim line, but I'm going to go with my hands are getting steadier. This is a good example of the difference between a black wash and a brown wash. If you watched my Copperhead Road build, you would see what a similar colored interior does with a brown wash. And I wanted this one to be grimier, so I went with the black wash over the brown wash. Caliper measurements for the decals, and it was off to Photoshop. After looking for inspiration at other British panel trucks, I decided I wanted to make a shop truck that was a tribute to a very good friend of mine who has been incredibly helpful these last few months as I've struggled to make my 2020 work. I wanted to create a fictitious company based around my friend Colin Wright. He's been an amazing friend and inspiration and encouragement to me, and I wanted to give him a little tribute with this build. Colin has recently acquired an auto parts store in Oklahoma, so be sure to visit JC's Auto Parts on Facebook when you get a moment and give him a like. His link will be in the description below as well. Colin is a huge Ford fan, and I try not to hold that against him. This is a British Ford, and all Fords are the same, I'm told, so I figured he would appreciate this one. So, thanks Colin. Appreciate all you do for me, and for being such an amazing friend. My new friend Typhus Corrosion came out, and it was time to start applying rust. Genius that I am, I completely missed the part where I was supposed to paint the fenders black first. So we're going to see some of these rust spots disappear and reappear again very soon. Ah, there it is. The oily black getting applied to the fenders. 
I gave it a little thinning with distilled water just to make sure that the brush strokes were at a minimum. Because of the heavy weathering that was about to go on to this car, I wasn't too worried about brush strokes showing up. Going back to that reference material, I looked at that particularly weathered panel truck and recreated as best I could some of the patchiness of the rust and the patina that had acquired over the last couple decades on this vehicle. Some black wash to the grill to help the individual lines stand out. And then it was time for my friend the brown Gundam marker to come back and help those panel lines pop. As I'm learning with shooting on my mobile phone, it's important to double check and make sure that your video files do not get corrupted. Unfortunately, I lost all of the footage from the decal application, but trust me on this, it went just fine. I did not have to dip into my spares at all, and this is definitely not the last possible version of the available <laughs> decals I made. The roof was a tough one for me. I wasn't really sure what to do with the roof. I didn't really want to get into salt chipping this go around. I wanted to try that on another build. So I stuck to the corrosion and rise of rust. My builds tend to turn out a little more punchy, especially when I'm working with colors like this blue. But once I got the blue and the riser rust applied, I realized it was almost too punchy, so I needed to tone things down a little bit. I thought the easiest way to lighten all of this would be to add some highlight white all the way around to make it look like the paint had faded and there was a fine layer of dust all over the vehicle, and it went terribly. I do not recommend doing this. It took a lot of time to fix, but it did ultimately dull the finish of the paint, which maybe it helped, but I think there's better ways to do this that do not take as much time to correct. I had these cheap oil paints, so I wanted to use them to make a dot filter. The important thing with oil paints is to give the linseed oil that they are mixed with a chance to seep out, so apply it to some brown paper, and that will be really all it takes to get that linseed oil out. And Within 10 minutes, you'll notice a fine film of linseed oil around the oil paints, as you can see here. And it's time to start making some dots. I added some lighter color dots at the top with darker color dots at the bottom. And once I had everything where I thought it was satisfactory, I came in with some odorless thinner and a paintbrush and went to work. My initial reaction was abject horror because, as you can see, it went on very heavily, but I was able to get most of it off. An important thing to remember is with applying washes and filters to make sure that it is the opposite kind of paint as the sealer that was applied below it. So I had used an acrylic sealer before this, and that allowed me to use oil-based paints without having to worry too much about the paint underneath getting compromised by these types of filters. Again, this created a lot more work than expected, but I didn't hate the final outcome. It would be fun to do a much more bold version of the streaking. As you can see, it goes on very heavy the first go around, and you think everything is horrible and you've ruined your beautiful kit, but you gently keep applying, and it works its way out, and it fades, and it creates a really nice finish. I'm looking forward to trying this style on maybe a larger vehicle or one that is much more rust-based than this one. Time to bust out my old friends, the weathering powders. I used the rusty red this go around and the rusty brown. I tried to keep the brown and black on the lower side of the vehicle and the reds up more towards the top. I really liked this muddy brown for simulating earth and dirt down at the base, and then touching it up with a little grimy black to add to the tarnish. And with a couple of snaps, the green light Tokyo torque wheels were ready to go. I ended up going a little too subtle initially with the wheels, so I went back in and corrected it later. And some powders for the chassis, and retouches for the wheels. I decided not to overthink the wheel mounts and just put a dab of Gorilla Glue on each side to mount the spare tires. This was another almost oopsie with deciding to tone down the lightness of the white powders with a black wash. And oh man, did I really think I had screwed it up here. It did unfortunately take away some of the texture from the oil paints, but as it dried, I discovered I was gonna be okay. 
After sealing up the mess below with some putty and super glue, it was time to apply a final dusting of powders to tie everything together and apply the Flying Valiant decal and give 0002 its official number. Again, here's what we started out with, a 2005 Asphalt Jungle Ford Anglia panel van from Hot Wheels. And here's how it turned out. I really liked how this one turned out. Again, it was almost a little too much, but once I discovered I had used transparent decal paper for the Wright's Motorworks images, I realized that the decal was going to be a little too faded to be believable as the light weathering that I was initially going toward. So I leaned into some heavier weathering to match the fadedness of the decals. This was a lot of fun. Colin, I hope you appreciate my little nod to you and your projects, and I wish you the best of luck with JC's Auto Parts. And again, I thank the Three Blind Mice for hosting this event, and I'm excited to see what everybody else comes up with. This was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to next month's build. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Let me know what you think about my process so far. What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? Uh, let me know what you think. I'd uh, love to hear your thoughts, and oh look! There's a whole bunch of buttons down there. Why don't you press them all and see what happens? Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.